Conference on Roughing the Plasma Reticulum, Golgi, and Secretion. Here we see where uh, the pathway that proteins follow from roughing the plasma reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and then through the cell surface. And on the right side, we see uh, zymogen granules uh, in a secretory cell that will be discharged uh, in, the, in the lumen. Now the objectives of the conference on secretion to reinforce the idea of the pathway of the production and secretion of proteins of cells by considering defects in the pathway. To use techniques we have discussed and introduce a new technique to isolate specific proteins to solve problems and predict outcomes of defects in the pathway. To reinforce the idea that each step of a pathway is an opportunity for a disease. Remember we were talking about the pulse chase experiment. In this case we're following the temporal appearance of different things throughout the cell. As you give a pulse which is a radioactive material followed by the chase is a non-radioactive material so that you can follow the radioactivity through the cell as it proceeds. And here you can see in three minutes it's in the refinite plasma reticulum, 20 minutes in the Golgi apparatus, and 60 minutes in secretory granules and the secretions itself. So we use a pulse chase experiment, looked at the temporal appearance of the radioactivity in different uh, time periods to, to find which cells or which portion of the cell was labeled at which time. <clears throat> Also, Pilate used a cell fractionation. In this, he ground up cell components to separate the components in a sucrose gradient. So you had a sucrose gradient, different concentrations of sucrose in your tube. You loaded the fragments of the cells on the top, and then you centrifuge it, ultracentrifugation, really high speed, and that would yield uh, uh, vesicles from the rough and plasma reticulum, that is uh, heavy vesicles, and those that did not have any rough and plasma reticulum, which was the Golgi uh, apparatus. And so then they were looking for proteins in each of these two fragments, smooth vesicles or the rough vesicles. And so here we see the comparison between uh, the radiography, which was done on the piece of tissue itself, uh, and the cell fractionation. So when the cell fractionation was done, radioactivity was found in the rough and the reticulum in about three minutes. Likewise, 20 minutes later, it no longer was in the, in the rough and the plasma reticulum, but the radioactivity had moved up to the Golgi apparatus, again illustrating uh, the pathway of first rough and the plasma reticulum and then the Golgi apparatus in protein secretion. Now, a new technique we haven't talked about is imidoprecipitation. This is a method to re render specific soluble proteins insoluble when centrifuge. In other words, they're suspended, solubilized, but then you bring them out of suspension. Allow separation, isolation, identification of specific proteins in a solution. <coughs> Antibodies uh, are specific for the protein of interest and when bound to beads, add weight to the protein and allows it to precipitate under centrifugation. And here you see a little diagram of a mixture of proteins. There's those kind of orange ones and then also the yellow green ones. And we're interested in the, in the, in the yellow blue ones, I should say. <coughs> Antibodies are added. And then protein A beads bind to antibodies. So you have beads that are coat uh, the are coated and they bind to the antibodies and then you centrifuge it down and the beads sink to the bottom as a consequence uh, it being linked by antibody to your protein of interest you have your protein of interest at the bottom of the tube. We call this immunoprecipitation. Now evidence for a pathway as I mentioned before is the temporal appearance of radioactivity in different organelles. First in the, in the rough and plasma reticulum, followed by the Golgi apparatus. And Pilate used two ways. 
autobiography of tissue itself and then cell fractionation where he was able to look at the smooth versus the rough vesicles. Now if you ribosomes are free in the cytosol uh, in the beginning and then if they produce a signal they go down the rough and the plasma reticulum. If there's no signal they stay in the cytosol and that's how proteins are added to mitochondria, proxosomes, and the nucleus. In contrast, if they have a signal peptide that binds to the retinoplasma reticulum, the protein is uh, placed inside the, the cistern of the, uh, of the endoplasma reticulum and then continues to be in the Golgi uh, and then through uh, to the secretory granules or to the surface or the lysosome. So, uh, <clears throat> we have two different types of reaction. We've got the scalar reaction where the precursor A and precursor B is in the same container as C. And that's what we have with the free ribosomes, or polyribosomes or a group of ribosomes, which produce uh, their protein in the cytosol. In contrast, the vector, vectorial reaction is when precursor A and B are in a different chamber than C. And this is brought about by membranes uh, and the protein is actually put into uh, the endoplasmic uh, reticulum uh, inside. So in terms of protein sorting, you get signal peptides um, to, to attach the RER and start transfer. Then you get signal recognition particle that binds to that signal and then riboforins on the rough endoplasmic reticulum binds the ribosomes uh, to the endoplasmic reticulum. Here again, we can see the cytosol, um, uh, ribosomes producing a protein uh, that is loose in the cytosol in contrast uh, to where the protein is actually attached to the cisternae of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, also, you can have a stop transfer sequence. It's a hydrophobic amino acid, just like the start transfer sequence. Uh, and that's the way you put proteins, make a transmembrane protein in a protein. So the first component is if it produces the signal peptide. The signal peptide then binds to uh, a signal recognition particle, which then binds it to the rough endoplasmic plasma reticulum, and, and therefore the protein is continued uh, in the cisternae of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, and here we can see where the protein is in there and then uh, the signal, uh, which is a hydrophobic thing, is called, uh, trapped in the membrane, is then cut off, is removed by a signal peptidase. Signal peptidase has got to be able to recognize a certain amino acid in there and clips it right at that amino acid. M meanwhile, the, the protein is free in the cistern of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now by a series of these start and stop transfer sequences, uh, you can uh, uh, have the protein released in the lumen, as I mentioned to you, or uh, you can actually have the, uh, produce a transmembrane protein uh, by uh, uh, disattaching the original signal, but have a stop transfer sequence. In other words, you have another series of, of um, hydrophobic amino acids uh, that will uh, cause the membrane to be, uh, the protein be stuck in the membrane. And here we can see how you can get the hydroxyl group on the inside or the outside depending upon if you have a start and stop uh, transfer sequence. And if you have a series of start, stop, start, stop, uh, you can get loops uh, uh, in the protein, in the transmembrane protein that you have. Uh, so as uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum produces those uh, proteins uh, and then they go through the Golgi apparatus. Uh, when it comes out of the Golgi apparatus, a default mode is constitutive secretion where the, whatever's inside is now dumped to the outside. And that is, does not require a signal. As soon as it makes it, it produces it like a plasma cell. In contrast, if you have metal-6-phosphate, in there, the protein is designated to go to a lysosome. Now, there is another uh, signal mediated like the induction, induction of, uh, of secretion. 
uh, insulin in the case of pancreatic acid cells will cause uh, the granules uh, to be released. So there's three places, default, constitutive, it could be uh, signal mediated, uh, or it could go into the lysosome, and that's the protein sorting associated uh, with uh, the Golgi apparatus. Now there are cytoplasmic proteins, cytosolic proteins, especially in high concentration, that can take the constitutive light mode uh, in that cytoplasmic proteins can participate with apical secretion. In other words, you can get uh, proteins inside the cell which are not membrane bound uh, in the beginning like this process the cytosolic proteins uh, and if they increase in a high enough number they will leak out the cell as if it was a constitutive type secretion. A lysosomal pathway a metal 6 phosphate direct vesicles to be a uh, go to the lysosome so in the process of coming through the, the refinum plasticum, mannose is added, and then if it's phosphorylated in the Golgi apparatus, then it will be designated to go to um, a, a primary lysosome. Now, the Golgi apparatus is polarized. It has different portions. Uh, uh, phosphates are added in the cis part. Mannose uh, is removed. Uh, uh, other sugars are added in the mid part and then other sugars are uh, added in the trans part as well. Also, in addition to sugars, uh, Golgi adds fatty acids, uh, sulfur groups, uh, galactose, uh, and also it participates in recycling. So once it dumps its cargo, uh, the vesicles, in, uh, empty cargoes can come back uh, to recycle the membrane. So here we can see it again where you've got proteins in the refinoplasma reticulum goes to the Golgi apparatus and then ultimately is dumped out on the cell surface. So what's on the inside, if you follow that little dot, you see the little dot is on the inside all the way through the vesicles until you get to the very end and then the dot is on the outside. So um, uh, what's on the inside becomes outside as the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane to discharge its contents. So in regards to considerations for this conference, how are proteins segregated to stay in the cytosol versus enter uh, the, the system of the endoplasmic of the rough endoplasmic reticulum? How is protein separated from its signal to become free uh, in the system of the rough endoplasmic reticulum? Starts out with a signal, how is it freed? And then how might the function of a signal peptidase uh, that must bind to a specific site on the protein where it cuts be rendered inactive. What could happen to make it become inactive? Also considerations are how might immunoprecipitation facilitate identification of specific proteins trapped in organelles in conjunction with biochemical procedures like cell fractionation? How could you use immunocytochemistry, immunoprecipitation immunoprecipitation uh, with cell fractionation. What is the default secretion mode of proteins? Also considering is the sugars. Which parts of the secretory path are required to add carbohydrates to proteins? And here you can see in the refinitive plasma reticulum, of course you've got some initial glycosylation, uh, some of it's cut off, uh, others are added in the Golgi apparatus, and that's what we're supposed to do in a conference today to try to figure out which is which. So in this case, we have a hormone that's being secreted. It's a little too large, uh, but it, and it doesn't become secreted. Um, uh, and, and so um, uh, you're supposed to investigate that uh, where would it be if it's not secreted and it's actually produced but not uh, secreted. Uh, and then the second part is uh, how will you measure the different components uh, of the protein with and without the signal uh, and work with the signal uh, peptidase, what kind of defects may be going. And the second mutation, mutant B, it was synthesized from a hormone but could not secrete it. It made it, but it couldn't secrete it. In contrast to A, the B does not um, inhibit does not have extended 
in the plasma reticulum amino acid sequence study the hormone and it could be indicated a total lack of signal so where would it go if it had no signal um, and then finally the secretion was where would the sugars be so uh, when the different types of mutants uh, which sugars would be present on on those and which one may not be so that's kind of what we're supposed to do so objectives of this conference again to reinforce the knowledge of the pathway the use techniques to solve problems uh, and also to reinforce the idea that each step uh, is an opportunity uh, for a disease state.